There's that little dude. He looks really cool. Hey everyone, so right here, um, I've been wanting to get these guys for a while. Right here we have my Cubaris SP Panda King. And these guys are part of the Cubara species and are really cool. They got delivered, so let's unbox these babies. The shipping was really fast. I think I ordered around two days ago. And it already got here today. Let's see what they look like. Some nice little packaging. Here they are. Nothing else. So here's the packaging. Looks like I got 10 of them. That's what I ordered. Sometimes companies will give one extra or so. Just in case. I got my scissors again. Just in case one is dead on arrival. Some people do that, some people don't. Like Tape does not want to come off. So these guys are really cool isopods, per the Cubaris. Takes a little bit for them to get settled in, but after that, they're pretty much really good. The other ones, but here they are. So here are all 10 healthy and alive. Most of them were burrowed under the substrate, probably from shipping there. Must have been a little stressed and frightened. They're smaller than I thought. They're smaller than powders, as you can see, if you look at my fingernails and stuff. Really small, but they all arrived very healthily, and they look really cool. All right, everyone, so now I have another package here from Amazon that has a few more things that we're gonna need to set up this um, isopod enclosure. So right here, we just have some cocoa fiber. I need some of this just to reset up the frog's tank. I might need a little bit of this to add to their substrate. Sphagnum moss. It might look a little weird. When you get sphagnum moss, normally it does not look like this. It's just a little brick. This is from S-U-K-H, Sucka, whatever you want to call it. Really good quality from what I've heard. And all I do is put a little chunk in some water and it expands majorly, like 10 times the size of it. And we'll be using this on their moist side or more human side for these isopods. So we're going to open up the sphagnum moss and then we're going to put some into the water and a little tub that I have set up over here to the right of me. Just gonna get a little chunk of it. And while this waits, we are gonna work on the normal substrate and stuff. So let's just break off a little piece. So now while this sphagnum moss has already expanded a little bit, we're gonna let it expand a little more. And as this expands and takes up in all the moisture, we're gonna work on making the substrate in the enclosure. But first, we have our reptile soil. We're just gonna pour some in. Additional for them and works very well for some, some even good Cubara species like rubber ducky and whatnot. A lot of breeders and stuff use this. Pangea ABG mix, we're gonna add in quite a bit of this stuff. They seem to like this as well. There are oak leaf litter right here. Just take a few leaps and come with them up because I'll put some on top as well. I'm gonna get these mixed in well for them. Now next we have something that I did not mention we have in this container right here. Some eggshells that are crushed up and also sanitized. Now they need a source of calcium and these, this is pretty good just to add into their substrate and stuff. That'll just be a nice source of it. And then we'll also sprinkle some on top once we're finished. Next we have some damp sphagnum moss that is now ready. We're just going to sprinkle only in a little bit because we'll have some on top as well. Some of the rotting wood. It's not fully rotten yet, but should work nice. And now we can add the rest of the sphagnum moss that is now fully ready for it. And we will also get a lot of the moisture out of it. Basically, 
basically the ventilation right here is more because this is going to be their more drier side and right here will be their more damper side so we will be laying out the sphagnum moss just like this either more damper side something over here if they want more moisture if they like and they go to more of the drier side and now i'll also lay just a few more pieces of the rotting wood around in case they want some of that to smack on on the top of the surface so we'll add a few crushed oak leaves on top for them finish off their enclosure we'll add a cork bark right here on the more damper side and then another piece of cork bark just right here and they can hide under this and now that we are complete with the brand new enclosure that looks amazing with all the materials they should really enjoy this and now let's add the isopods there's actually one curled up in a little wall right here just to make it a little easier put them right here and i'm just gonna carefully put in the isopods So it is now about five minutes later, and now a lot of them have moved and are crawling around their enclosure, as you can see. So let's get some better close-ups on these guys. So as you can see, there's one crawling under the cork bark right now. See his little booty crawling down there. So there's one right there. Cool little dude. That dude. But these guys don't like being disturbed a whole bunch, so I'll put their things back. They like to burrow in the substrate a lot more than a lot of other isopod species. But after the colony or culture gets going, they should come out a lot more. There's a few crawling around in the more human side of this enclosure. There's a few right there and some more. So it looks like they're like in the human side more. Which I could see because they are a species that like humidity a lot. But yeah, these guys should be very cool, and I'm so glad to have them now. Just flip this piece of that little dude. He looks really cool. Hey everyone, thank you all for watching today's video. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe if you would like to see more awesome content just like this. If you're just now finding my videos, videos are out every Friday. So I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye, everyone.